What's up dudes and dudettes? I've gotta be honest with you because executing a perfectly cooked chicken breast isn't something you master in just a day or two. I mean, I've been a professional chef for 20 years now and I still mess them up from time to time. Today, we're gonna cheat a little bit and explore nine different tenderizing methods. Some will be ingredient-based techniques while others will rely on mechanical methods to get the job done. I'm gonna cook them all first and then with the help of my right-hand man, Marcus, we will initiate a taste testing session and let you know which ones work the best. There's no time to waste. Now let's go. So for this test, as well as the others you're gonna see today, I am doing isolated ingredients like just buttermilk, just yogurt, just pineapple juice. I really wanna see how the individual ingredients tenderize the chicken. However, down in the description, there will be full recipes for marinades if you wanna take it to the next level. We're gonna start today with our enzyme-based marinades. These are ingredients like yogurt, like pineapple, like buttermilk, which is gonna be our first test. The enzymes that give buttermilk its sour taste will help to break down the connective tissues and protein within the chicken, thus making it softer and more tender. And when it comes to a good buttermilk marinade, you can go anywhere between 12 and 24 hours. If you're looking to make buttermilk a complete marinade, you can add items like Frank's Red Hot, like hot sauce, like pickle juice and spices. Down in the description, there's a full recipe that I use as a brine for fried chicken that involves some of those ingredients. That's really good. Let me start with a clarification that today's test will only be used on chicken breasts since they're the hardest to get right. Chicken thighs are gonna be tender pretty much no matter what you do with them. Next up, we're gonna be using yogurt, which is a super popular tenderizing ingredient for chicken that's used all over the world. And yogurt has a mixture of lactic acid and microbes that help to break down that protein in the chicken, thus making it more tender. When doing a yogurt-based marinade, I use the exact same time frame as the buttermilk, so 12 to 24 hours. And if you're looking to make this a more complete marinade, I can highly recommend the chicken shawarma recipe that's down in the description. That one has been so popular on my channel. Our next tenderizing ingredient is pineapple, which contains a mixture of two enzymes called bromelain that help to break down the protein within the chicken. And they target the connective proteins called collagen and break them down into shorter segments. And in doing so, this actually weakens the structure of the meat, thus making it more tender. There's a catch though, because apparently this only works with fresh pineapple. The process of canning pineapple juice actually kills that bromelain and thus kills the tenderizing effects. But I had to put this to the test myself, so I bought both canned and fresh pineapple to see how they differ. I simply just blended up both kinds of pineapple and then dumped it over the chicken. And since these pineapple enzymes are so strong, you only want to do a two to four hour marinade on this one. And if you're really trying to round this off into a whole meal, there will be a recipe down in the description that involves soy sauce, garlic, and ginger to add to the pineapple juice, which will give you some really delicious sort of Hawaiian style chicken. Before moving forward with these enzyme based techniques, I just want to kind of poke at them, right? I'm just going to, this little thing right here. I just want to see if I can feel any difference. Buttermilk just feels pretty normal to me, to be honest. Hmm, interesting. Yogurt to me feels like it's got a little more give. Now here's what I'm most curious about, the fresh pineapple. Whoa, this one's got a serious amount of give. And the canned pineapple. This one feels really different to the uh, fresh pineapple. The fresh pineapple feels squishy. The canned pineapple feels definitely more firm. Obviously the test is gonna be in the cook. So what I'm gonna do is rinse all these off, dry them off, and just hit them with a little bit of salt. I'm not a monster. I can't just eat chicken breasts without some kind kind of seasoning, right? I've got three more tenderizing techniques for you today and they are all mechanical based. Smash. We're gonna start with a simple meat mallet, then upgrade to this stabby thingy and finally round it all off with a massage gun. Yeah, that's right. I think it'll work. Classic mallet technique. The only thing you need to know while doing this is to mostly aim for that thick side of the chicken breast. Chicken breast goes like that as it thins out towards the tail. So we're trying to make everything the same thickness so it cooks evenly and thus is more tender on each bite. And obviously it's just breaking down the muscle fibers, making it more tender. Let's see how fast Marcus can uh, do this. It's like cartoon a... fast. Oh my God, that's really fast. <laughs> I don't wanna go again. I, re I think the trick to this is really not hitting it too hard all at once. You wanna do lots of light little taps. There we go. That's good for me. Let's get to stabbing. And if you've never seen one of these, this is how it works, right? You push it down on the meat and it exposes these million little daggers and they poke all these tiny, teeny little holes in the meat, thus allowing for a better penetration of a marinade if you're doing that or just tenderizing it. It's kind of insane. We've actually used this before on a bunch of different kinds of meats with pretty good results. Here we go. That is wild. I'm gonna flip. Now, how many holes do you wanna put is up to you. I'm just trying to get it where I feel like it's pretty flat, but I don't wanna do it too much where it's like mush, you know? So 
I'm gonna leave it just about like that. A million years ago, man discovered fire. In 850 CE, China invented gunpowder. In 1969, we put the first man on the moon. And in March of 2024, the pinnacle of, of human ingenuity. We're gonna tenderize a chicken breast with a massage gun. This is a historic day. Starting at 50% power. Let's really give it to it. It might be here a while. Increase power? Dear God, man, my arms are giving out. <laughs> Increase power. Good God, man, give it everything you got. Unleash hell. This is dumb. Show it no mercy, for it will show you none. I've been here for probably six or seven minutes now doing this because I really want to give it a, you know, a proper go. Certainly it's not the fastest way to tenderize a chicken but it's actually working because this is a lot flatter than it used to be. I don't want to be on my deathbed and be like, what would have happened if I used this on a chicken breast, you know? I have to know. Okay, that's good. All I need to do now is salt all my chicken breasts a little bit so we're not just eating plain unseasoned chicken. Then we're gonna sear them off in Maiden's Carbon Steel Cookware, who I'm proud to say is the sponsor of today's video and I have been using their products long before they ever sponsored this channel. And you don't need to just take my advice for it. There are three Michelin star restaurants out there with the best chefs in the world using these pans, like Alinea in Chicago and La Bernardine in New York City. And today we'll be talking specifically about their line of carbon steel cookware, which is one of my favorite all-time materials to use. Their award-winning carbon steel frying pans are made in France and Sweden by the best craftsmen and women who have been producing carbon steel for more than 300 years. Not only are these pans incredibly durable, but they heat up super quickly, but are also light enough to be super maneuverable around the stove. They can go straight from a stovetop into a super hot oven or even outside over an open fire up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. These things are machines. Personally, for me, I love to use these workhorse pans for proteins, right? fish, lamb, beef, chicken, doesn't matter, it works. They even have this incredible carbon steel wok, which you're gonna see me use in a minute. And it's designed specifically for a home kitchen, so it has a flat base that will sit better on your stovetop, which makes it not only great for stir fry, but also for braising or even deep frying. You can check out the carbon steel collection as well as Maiden's other cookware by clicking the link down in the description to save on your order. Thank you Maiden for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the experiment. Get a little golden brown crust on them and then finish them off in the oven. I'm gonna pull them all at the exact same temperature, so we can write off that whole, is it different from the temperature thing? And then we'll bring everything together for the final judging and tasting. The next tenderizing technique is called velveting, which raises the pH on the outside of the meat. This makes it so the proteins have a harder time bonding together as the meat cooks, thus making it more tender. And I'm gonna show you two ways to do this today. The first will be with baking soda and the second will be with egg white. If you've ever been out to eat at a Chinese restaurant and wondered how they got their meat so velvety and soft and silky, this is how they do it. Now for both of these velveting techniques, we're gonna start by making thin little slices of the chicken. This is not one where you use on whole chicken, this is more for like a stir fry. So just nice slices across, something like this looks pretty good. I actually really like this technique. On another note, you can see the grains running on the chicken. Right here, they're like this, but on the other side of the chicken, they're actually running like that. If you wanted to get real technical about like how to like slice chicken across the grain, you would actually do this, and then you would go like this, because that's going across the grain. And then on this one, you would actually go like this. Although you can simplify it by just cutting the whole breast across and you do get more across the grain that way. For the egg white method, you're gonna start with one egg white here. I'm adding two teaspoons of rice wine. That's Shaoxing wine. You could use mirin or you could use something else. Or you could leave it out all together, totally fine. Teaspoon of sesame oil, half teaspoon kosher salt, half teaspoon white pepper, two teaspoon corn starch. You could use another starch too. You'll see it made with arrowroot root or potato or a sweet potato starch. And this one's entirely optional. You don't have to do it if it upsets you in any way, but I'm doing a little sprinkle of MSG. And I like to work it together in a separate vessel first before adding to the chicken. Otherwise it can tend to get kind of clumpy. So I'm just gonna whisk it here first. It's kind of so silly, you know, obviously this would have been easier if I maybe used a bigger bowl and a bigger whisk, but doing what I'm doing, it's actually not taking that long. And then on it goes. And now same exact deal as the baking soda. You're gonna let this sit for 20 minutes and it's it's gonna begin to absorb all those nice flavors and liquid. And when it comes to cooking velveted meat, there's a lot of ways to do it. This one's actually gonna be poached in water while the baking soda method is gonna be just fried straight into a wok. Also, sometimes it's blanched and deep fried in oil before being used again. And Chinese restaurants will definitely use all three methods for different purposes. Now for the egg white poaching technique, it's as simple as dropping it into some boiling water. Give it a little mix so it doesn't all clump. I know this one may seem a little gross to you, but this is an incredible technique 
technique that's been happening for a very long time. So it depends if you maintain the boil on your water or not, but this only takes 45 seconds to a minute. It can take a little bit longer maybe if your water wasn't boiling as much like mine. And now you wanna get it right out onto like a colander or a resting rack like this so it can drain and dry. Now you don't eat it just like this. I mean, you could, but this is then how you would hold it, getting ready for a stir fry. So then this would go into a wok with vegetables, with soy sauce, with oyster sauce, or what have you. And now Marcus has never seen this before. If you feel it, Marcus, you feel that texture. It's almost like slick, slimy. Yeah. Velvety is a good word for it. It does feel like velvet on your skin. I'm gonna finish up the egg white method, really simple. Made in's carbon steel wok. Just be careful when you do this, they're still a little bit wet. And I am gonna put a tiny bit of soy sauce. Won't change the texture, but you know, needs to be kind of somewhat enjoyable to eat. Really simple. There we go, one minute and it's done. And out it goes. For the baking soda method, we're gonna add water. Whoa, whoa. And the chicken should suck up this water. This is a technique. So two tablespoons of water for about one eight to 10 ounce chicken breast and just half a teaspoon of baking soda, not powder, soda, mind you, you don't need a lot. And now I'm gonna mix and there's science happening inside of this chicken right now. All you need to do is leave this for 20 minutes and then I'll show you what to do with it next. And as this sits, that chicken is like sucking up the water and it's getting all plump and tender and the bacon soda is going all out and brown in there. Here we go. After 20 minutes, you're gonna wanna rinse this off really well. That is the ticket. You don't want that baking soda taste. You just want the tenderizing effect. So dry it off really well. And then like I said, you could blanch it in water, you could blanch it in oil, or you can shallow fry it in a wok like I'm gonna do. It's really more about the tenderizing effect. If we wanna get into like wok cooking and wok dishes, it's a whole nother world. Same wok, I'm just adding some oil. And let's carefully lower in that chicken. And we're gonna cook this quickly. And by the way, we're using this method for chicken, but you can use it on pork, beef, lamb, duck, whatever. Now, same deal. Don't wanna eat it without some kind of salt, little soy sauce, again, just for the salt. I mean, do you guys really wanna watch us eat chicken with no salt? That's not right, man. That's not right. Get that out. Okay, my friends, let's get to these results. Chicken time. Well, let me tell you what. That was a little bit of a wild orchestration to pull this off and get them all out at the same temperature. There were some burns, there was some off-camera stuff, but we got it done. We're gonna start with the eight whole chicken breasts, and then we're gonna finish off with the two velveting techniques. So, Marcus, yeah. you ready to do this? I said, are you ready? I want eight He just breasts. not fired up. Let's I'm get him fired up, guys. Cheer him on. Come on. Cheer him on at home. Oh, that's, Let's not, go, that's not loud enough. Pump it up. Okay, now we're ready. Which one do you think is going to be the most tender? I honestly have no idea, but based on how it felt raw, I would say the fresh pineapple or the yogurt would be my guess. Mm. Um, Thick pineapple is just going to be best overall. Let's start with buttermilk. Holy smokes, that feels tender. We're gonna make some gains today, Marcus. Whoa! Now I wanna show you guys this buttermilk because, oh my God, look how it's flopping. Look at the wave. Now watch the pull apart. This thing feels unbelievably tender, right? You feel that? Oh yeah. Whoa! Well, we don't have to try anymore. That is like, what the hell? I know we're doing an experiment, but you don't really need anything to be more tender than that. I think that's a, one of the most tender chicken breasts I've ever tried. So much better than I thought it was gonna be. Like, I've never used just buttermilk, I don't think. It's got a little tang to it. There's a little tang to it? So tender. If you didn't tell me anything, I'd be like, that is ridiculous. Now I'm concerned for the things that felt tender before getting cooked. <laughs> that is wild. Okay, we just tasted buttermilk, but as morons who aren't the best at science, we should have started with the control group, obviously, of any experiment of all time. Mm. So next, control group. It's <laughs> good, that's good, smart, Marcus. It's been a hectic day, guys, cooking 10 chicken breasts at the same time. Control, here we go. Nothing wrong with a control. And I do have some words of wisdom about chicken at the end of this. Honestly, control looks really good. Oh, that's delicious, it's very tender. And maybe this is a good time to mention, at the end of this video, I'm gonna put a link to like just a perfectly cooked chicken breast recipe without doing any of these tenderizing techniques. I think if you can nail that, and I know you can, it kind of makes the rest not obsolete, but like you wouldn't need to take the extra time to do it, so to speak. The control is good, buttermilk is still more tender. That's where we're at right now. Okay, let's go to uh, the yogurt. This, yeah, I'm concerned that one of these is gonna be like, like some of these might be too tender. Now again, this yogurt feels incredibly tender. Look at that pull apart, very tender feeling. Mm, mm, wow. I would say the yogurt's definitely comparable to the buttermilk. They're both like very, very tender. I feel like they're similar. They're both very tender. Buttermilk had a tang to it that I'd say is more noticeable. 
And that's honestly, flavor-wise, probably why I like it better. Should we do the canned or the fresh first? Let's go canned. Let's... Okay. You can see the way that this pineapple's here. There's definitely a lot of sugar in there, right? You can see the extra blackening. This one also looks and feels pretty tender. Here we go. Mm. Mm. I mean, it's crazy tender too. It's a little firmer than the yogurt and the buttermilk. Not quite as tender, but still very good, very tender. And I like the uh, sweetness from the pineapple. This one, I'm honestly noticing flavors more than tenderness. They're mm -hmm. all, they've all been very tender so far, mm. but flavor from pineapple is great. Surprisingly good for just being pineapple juice and salt. Although you follow that recipe in the description, a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of garlic and ginger. Although careful with the ginger, that really breaks down chicken. Fresh pineapple. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, that one looks like fresh, dude. You couldn't even cut it. Whoa. That's weird. Now cutting into this fresh pineapple, it feels mushy, especially the edge. Let's see. Whoa, that is interesting. That is totally different. Ew. Ew. Ooh, oh, oh. So oh, the edge was disgusting. The tail end? Like almost like it was bre wet breading. That's a good way to describe it, Marcus. It is like it, well, wet bread, like soggy bread. Kind of, honestly. Off-putting. It's off-putting and I would stick to canned pineapple. Now you could experiment with fresh pineapple and cut down that marinade time. Maybe 20 minutes is good, you know, but two hours, like I did mine, two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. No bueno, uh-uh, I don't like that. So we can conclude bromelain is active in fresh pineapple and not so much in the can. Here's the massage gun chicken for you. And to be honest with you, this thing feels tender. It pulls right apart. Let's see, that's a good piece of chicken right there. Yeah, it's tender as hell. Is it like a different kind of tender? Or am I making that up? I need to taste a little piece of control right now so I can, dude, it's definitely more tender than control. I'm saying like, I wonder if the physical breaking down is different. It's like a firm kind of tender. Like it's tender, yeah. but firm. You know what I mean? It's got more snap or texture to it. Mm. Not in a bad way. I'd say it definitely beats control. It's dumb. Get your massage. Massage guns ready, guys. It works. Here we go. Punch. Now, obviously, the whole punch one looks like it was grabbed by a dog. Mm. Dog took a couple laps around the yard, handed it off to a bird who pecked the crap out of it. Squirrel, elbow, back to us. Looks like a dish sponge. Oh, not a fan. It breaks it down too much in a weird way. Just like somebody chewed your chicken for you and then pressed it back into the shape. Maybe if you do less holes, it's gonna be better, but when you have these amazing, you know, buttermilk, yogurt, pineapple, <laughs> massage gun even, and even control chicken, why would you do that? Maybe it's good with some marinades, but just on its own with salt. Mm, don't don't like do it. it, don't do it. Okay, classic mallet chicken. It feels pretty tender. You know, this is the one that humanity's probably done the most. Here we go. Hmm, yeah, I mean, I think the massage gun was more tender. Here's how I feel about the mallet right now. It's not bad, but it's like denser. Like I feel like it's like, it's like compacted the muscle fibers. Whereas like the massage gun one was sort of vibrated essentially feels more tender than the mallet. Yeah, there's a denseness to it that I'm not um, super keen on. I would have guessed the mallet would have been the best of them. There is a denseness to it. It like changed the texture. Obviously we just had chicken. I'd be like, that's, that's good. But after trying every one of them, it's very clearly not as good as some of the other ones. And we will rank them in a minute, but first we got to try the two velvets. Let's start with the egg white here. Mm. It's very classic. Mm. I know it's missing the sauce and everything else, but that is that Chinese restaurant silky feel. Yeah. And with the sesame oil and everything else that's in there, it just tastes, it tastes so good right now as it is. Good, right? That's nice, yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. There's, the texture's perfect. Okay, baking soda and water. That one's really tender too. Mm -hmm. Different kind of texture, like a little snappier, a little bit bouncier, but good. Both techniques are really good. I would recommend them both. I would give the slight edge to the one that's poached in water or the egg white, but baking soda and water also works really well. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't have baking soda and water? That's the benefit of that one. Now, if we had to rank these eight whole cooked chicken breasts by tenderness, and we'll start with worst first, man, it's either the punch or the fresh pineapple. God, they're both really bad. It doesn't matter. Six, five. Okay, six, five, no. Eight, seven, or eight, seven, doesn't matter. Six, absolutely the um, the mallet. Right. I don't know, just the denseness about it. Mm. Now, five, I think we control. would have to put control at five. Yeah, yep. that's where that should be. Massage is four, definitely, right? Three, canned pineapple, yep. because yogurt and buttermilk are the most tender. Now, two and one, buttermilk and yogurt, they're both extremely tender. I would maybe give the slight edge to buttermilk. I like buttermilk better just because 
I mean, it was perfect. Mm. And then if you put one in yogurt, you put one in buttermilk, I like the tang in buttermilk better. Yeah, so yogurt at two, buttermilk at number one. And there you go, my friends, buttermilk is the king. Good job, buttermilk, man. I've always loved it, but using it on its own, just with salt on a piece of chicken is actually incredible. All right, my friends, that's it. You know what to do, make it, make them, make them. I hope you enjoyed this experiment today. I know we had a lot of fun making this video and figure out which ones we like best. And again, down in the description, you'll find yogurt, buttermilk, and pineapple-based recipes. And if you've been looking to stock your own kitchen with equipment, I keep a mega list of everything I love to use here down there. I also have my Master in the Making ebook out that has 55 of my personal favorite recipes. And if you wanna keep learning today, as promised, I highly suggest you learn how to just perfectly cook a piece of chicken in the pan with no tenderizing techniques. And as a bonus, that comes with an incredible pan sauce. And if you wanna keep on this chicken train today, here's another one of our personal favorite recipes from the channel. Until next time, you know I love you in a mouth.